Today, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine. This is Artipithecus ramidus, but you can call her Artie. Artie is one of our oldest ancestors. <clears throat> so you might have heard that chimpanzees are the species the most like humans. That's true, but it does not mean that chimpanzees ever turned into humans. It means that a long time ago there was a creature, and some of those creatures turned into chimpanzees, and some of those creatures turned into humans. Artie's probably not quite that creature. We think Artie's a little bit closer to the human side, so there was still a creature earlier than Artie, but Artie's pretty close, and she is a very good indication of a, what a creature like that may have looked like. So I want you to notice some things about Artie. First of all, to give you some perspective, Artie is about three and a half feet, maybe four feet tall. So, she's pretty short. Even though she's pretty short, she has awfully long arms. And she's got five fingers and an opposable thumb. Interestingly enough, if you look down, you'll notice she also has five toes and opposable toes. You know what you do with opposable toes? Well, you climb trees with opposable toes. You'll also notice that Artie is standing completely upright. That is the way the skeleton appears to have been put together. And Artie has a head that looks a little bit like a chimp's, but it's not overly large, it's pretty small. So based on this information, we can infer that Artie probably lived outdoors because of all the fur, Artie probably lived in the trees. Because with the opposable thumbs and the opposable toes, Artie probably swung around the trees a lot. So this was a chimp-like creature living mostly in trees, but generally having an upright stance. So let's think about what might happen if you have a lot of them living in trees. If you have a lot of Arties living in trees, there's not going to be that much food for everybody. Let's say one day an Artie was born, and instead of having opposable toes, they had flat toes like we did. They had five flat toes. They probably wouldn't be very good in the trees anymore, would they? They would not be able to get food in the tree. But they'd look over and they'd see the big, wide-open plains. You know what you can't do with opposable toes? You can't run with opposable toes. It's very, very difficult. The toes get all in the way, and you can't push yourself forward. But this Artie, with non-opposable toes, could now run in the field. So they jump down, they run in the field, and they get a whole bunch of extra food because nobody else is able to follow them. They are the fastest Artie in the field. Here's the best part about evolution. This is how it works. If you get to eat the food, you get to survive. If you get to survive, you get to have babies, and your babies have your traits. So Artie, who no longer has opposable toes, survives, has babies, and passes on non-opposable toes. So now there are more Arties living in the plains, and they're starting to look a little more like us. Now this isn't the exact path evolution took, but it's a way you could see a possibility. Going forward, you could see even more possibilities. Let's say, for instance, an Artie living in the plains now was born with a larger brain. Not even that much of a larger brain, just a slightly larger brain. Just enough to say, hmm, maybe instead of just running from predators, I could hide myself in camouflage and they won't find me. That would work, right? Just takes a little more brain power. Well, the Artie with a little more brain power gets to, you guessed it, survive and have babies, thereby passing on the brain power and so on and so forth. You could see how Artie could go ahead and become a human. Now, I said that Artie was also pretty close to the creatures that became chimps. But chimps are a little different from us, right? They don't stand upright. They hunch over. 
Could that have happened by evolution with an Artie? Well, let's think about it. Artie is currently standing upright, but currently pretty good at swinging around the trees. On the other hand, have you ever tried to run in a forest? You know what happens when you run in a forest? When I run in a forest, I trip over everything. Because you have to watch ahead of you so you don't run into trees. You have to watch down so you can see your feet. It's pretty difficult. But let's say one Artie was born with a genetic defect where they fall over on all fours instead of standing upright. It's not an impossible defect. In fact, there are families in the world that have that of humans. There's a whole family of humans that walk on all fours. It's really interesting. Well, if you did that, then your hands would be down near your feet. Your head would be down near both your hands and your feet. I bet you could run through a forest floor very effectively. That means you could get more food than the other arties. It means you could escape more predators than the other arties. That means you would survive, have babies, and pass those genes on to them. So slowly over time, arties who had hunched over would do better than arties who were standing upright. And you have something more similar to a chimpanzee. Now, if this was true, and there's some pretty good evidence that perhaps the upright creature was in fact the common ancestor, that means that every little evolution scheme where you start with the little hunched over ape and they slowly stand up to be a human has been wrong for all these years. Think about that. Thanks for watching.